Hey guys, thanks for watching In The Shed With Red. Today we got a new video on the Club Car DS. So I had an issue when my son parked it uh, a few months ago and we noticed that we had a lot of oil on the ground. It was way more than that. So I actually pulled the motor then and replaced the um, gasket that's on the side of the clutch. It had a it had a hole in it um it was torn easily seen and i did not do a video whenever i pulled the motor then but uh now i have a problem where the cart will only fire intermittently and i've watched a few other videos and i've learned some stuff there so i wanted to share it with you uh ultimately what my problem is and i'm gonna do my best to show um, it's a nail on my actual flywheel side i have oil leaking down underneath and i've learned that there is another area here that it has a cover over and if it wasn't placed properly uh, could have damaged that area with the camshaft so we're going to get into that and you can see here if you look all on this axle here All right, so step one is always disconnect your battery there. I have an extra setup. I have a winch. It's just kind of crazy mounted. Um, disconnect my ground. And so I pull the cover off and you'll have this cable right here that runs through both of these um, holders, brackets, whatever you want to call them. You also have this power cable that runs to your um, torque converter underneath. They both feed through here. So I'll pull both of these off. I pull this out of my shaft or out of my um, throttle cable here. And it's just a lot easier to feed it through. Tuck it back behind here so I don't need it anymore. Obviously the belts come off and you move the starter generator. I just have it laid over on the side where the muffler would go. The muffler comes out of two bolts here and it has a supporting bolt here. And I just pull it out of the way. It's easy enough to do that. Uh, and then I ultimately pull my my cable my throttle cable here from my carburetor off so all my cables are undone i'm unplugged here and you have one ground cable that comes to right here on the um, oil spout the motor mount however you want to call it um, so i have it moved and just tucked over here out of the way now what i have to do and i'm not going to show this part but you have four bolts on the bottom that actually hold the motor to the mount itself and then back here and then they're a pain in the butt to get to so i'm not going to be able to show it on video but you have two bolts that hold it to your hold the motor to your rear end and they're right back here and you just undo those bolts and then hopefully we're able to slide it out all right so we have the motor out um, i've already pulled the cover off not anything difficult there's a bolt here bolt here bolt here and there's supposed to be some on the bottom so that tells me that somebody has already fooled this at one point before um and i'm gonna go ahead and show you my problem i sprayed the my flywheel bolt with some P, pj blast so that way i can get it undone here in a few minutes but ultimately right here is the plate and i'll show you a better view in a minute but i have all this oil that is leaking underneath and you can see it all on the front there and I am guessing that is where it's coming from based off uh, knowledge I've gained from others on YouTube. And I will show you on the cart what it looks like. So you can see oil actually sitting down there. And this happened pretty immediately and I noticed it. So I don't, I don't have a ton. Um, whenever the other gasket broke previously, I had a truckload of oil um, down there to begin with. Right here is where the two back bolts off the motor go through i'm actually going to cut me a notch on each of these um, before i try to put it back in in case i ever have to do this again because they are a pain in the butt to get out and then you have a portion four mount bolts down there um here are where those bolts are on here i just screwed them back in so i don't lose them all right so i made the decision to go ahead and pull this off um, I'm just gonna go ahead and order another one while I got this baby torn apart it'll just be easier that way and you just take these two bolts out and it has a little clip right here and you just pull it off that's simple um, and we'll get another one to go on it 
I'd really rather never pull this thing apart again if I can help it. Um, almost considered changing to like a Harbor Freight motor or something like that. But I'm gonna give her one more go before we drop that kind of money. Um, I spayed, I, probably, blah, blah, I sprayed this with PB Blaster. I've got it loose now, I'm gonna show you what I did. I just took a crowbar. I mean, I have, I don't have regular mechanics tools. I got a basic set of stuff. Um, so crowbar here, seven, eight socket, slapped her on there. Um, obviously she just fell. And then a little bit of muscle and she come loose. So we'll get this off, pull the flywheel off and I'll show you a better look. All right, so we got the flywheel off. Uh, took a little bit of persuasion, a heck of a lot of the PB blaster on there. A um, couple of doses. I tried to do it manually with just a regular um, socket set and a, a gentle tap of the hammer. A little persuasion. Did not work. Ended up having to run it up to the old Harbor Freight. And found this guy for like 14 bucks, 8 inch puller. Um, hooked her on. I should have did a video on it, but it was a bit aggressive. I will say that. And ultimately, my impact alone would not do it. I had to get my pull bar and a hammer and ultimately got this baby off. But right here, you can see where the leak is. Look at this. All along in here. And ultimately what it is, is that the camshaft sits right behind here. And whenever the this cover is taken off, if it's not seated correctly, you have trauma. That's the best way to describe it, I guess, to this area. And then you end up with a leak, which is what I have. So we'll get that off and take a better look. I'm going to clean it up as I go. All right, so I want to show you what I have. So this plate came off from here, obviously, the other way. But look at all the breakdown in the plate. And then this guy came off here. And you can see, maybe, look at all the dirt and crud that is on that sucker. It's pretty wild. Um, and it has grooves that it sits in so that the oil actually passes through right here so that the oil actually passes through on the cam and then i'm going to pull this and show you what i'm talking about with the notch so see there is a slit there and apparently let me see if i can show you some why i don't know how well you can see it but there is a horizontal groove in there to match that slit appropriately and whenever you slide this baby back in horizontal groove one hand's tough you feel it go in but then you have to shift it just a little bit more to actually feel it pop into place and so now I'm perfect where I need to be here when I took it off I had a lot of play in it coming this way um, so I'm hoping that's my source I'm gonna clean all this up and get her put back together all right some more of an incidental finding than anything I took the valve cover off nothing to it um, pull these two bolts and you pull it off and I just cleaned and changed the gasket I have the gasket in the kit so I just changed the gasket and put it back on but in the process um, I was unhooking the vacuum line from the valve cover to the top of the car or intake and so it sits uh, like this, and I manipulated it just a little bit, and I noticed, so I can get it in the light. Right here, there is a crack, and if you open it up, I mean, just any pressure at all, the lighting is terrible. Now, there you go. There it is, and so I think that may be actually why I was spitting and sputtering, so. Not necessarily the leak, but more of a vacuum issue. So we'll replace that real quick. And I have some old fuel line tube that we can use for it, vacuum tube. Um, we'll replace that real quick and get her back together. All right, so we got it put back together. Um, I did end up leaving the shroud cover off for now, um, just so I can monitor. To see if I have any further leaks but I plan to ultimately put it back on in the next day or two the only thing I really have to do is I have to take this and 
breather hose off and hit a shroud or slide down in there, hopefully, and get back to where it needs to be. Um, I actually plan to change this out with a K&N air filter system anyway, so I can get rid of this big box and move my winch bracket somewhere else. So I've got it put back in. Uh, I actually cut the hole on the back like we were talking about earlier and that worked really well to slide the motor back down on and I have it folded up without any real complications. Uh, I did find a wire that was slightly spliced behind uh, all coming off the generator. So uh, so it was probably a little bit of a blessing in disguise there. I filled it back up with oil, got everything hooked back up. So I'm gonna run through it again real quick. So you have a ground here, vacuum hose, and then we have our new vacuum hose that we put on here. Fuel lines coming in. I have our breather tube back up. Uh, cover back on here. I have a throttle cable here, or throttle cable here. Muffler is back intact. I'm plugged in accordingly. I have my belts back on and tight. And then all my wiring hooked back in right here is my splice where it hooks back into the voltage regulator, which is underneath. Um, I have her in neutral. You can throw these into service mode too if you want. I had my son drive it around for about 30 minutes earlier. And he only knows one speed, which is fast. And I have not seen any leaking oil since that time frame. So hopefully... We have that repaired and we'll see how she does for the next few days before I put that shroud back. I actually did this all today. So I didn't, I ordered a new um, coal, but I ended up just cleaning that one up really well and with the real light sand over it uh, on it and the flywheel and it works great. So I'm just gonna put the other coal in the cabinet. So let's fire up. She runs great all together. This probably took me about six to seven hours today, and that's with a couple trips to Harbor Freight um, and doing other little things around the house. So it's not a terrible job, but uh, if you ever have the opportunity and you are doing some work where you take the actual body off, it might be worth revisiting um, some gasket work uh, while you have the opportunity to easily remove and replace that engine. Hey guys, I want to just give a quick shout out to folks like Porticello Engineering and Kevin's Carts or anybody who makes a video um, helping somebody else out with redoing their own cart rather than having to spend a ton of money at a shop. Um, I'm just a small town guy working with very few tools, um, watching YouTube videos, learning my way around it as well. So um, that's the reason I share what I do, uh, hoping that it might help somebody else in some little manner. So again, thanks for watching In the Shed with Red and keep making videos because I might use yours as well.